Good day, people, and here we are on the Bible in a Year 2021. We are continuing our journey through Exodus in these last few days, and uh, it's day 34, 30, 34 overall. And um, yeah, we have a lot to cover here. Exodus is filled with so much stuff, and uh, I can only highlight uh, certain aspects of it, but I'm sure you are getting a lot out of your reading. So just so so that th there's certain things that are going to come into play that's what i'm basically highlighting uh, things that will come into play down the road and and this is one of them in in exodus 13 verses 1 to 2 uh we see now where the importance of the firstborn are or the the first fruits how, just that that first bit it's always been important but now uh because of what's happened in, in, in Egypt, what happened uh, with the, the death of the firstborn and, and the fact that, that um, Yahweh had given them away for, for that plague to pass over them. Um, now the firstborn really belonged to him. And, uh, and so we hear that the Lord said to Moses, dedicate to me all your oldest children, each first offspring from all Israelite womb belongs to me, whether human or animal. So this is where it comes from. It comes for out, out of this Passover uh, event that took place. Um, let's move forward here. Okay, in, in uh, Exodus 13, 5, um, we, we're also, um, the target is set. It, it's very clear here, and you got to remember these names. Well, you don't have to remember these names, but just keep them, keep them aside, uh, highlight them so that you'll remember that there's five nations that Israel is going in, not even to displace. They're, they're going to wipe them off the face of the planet. That's what they're supposed to do because their wretchedness has become so vile. Uh, Yahweh waited until they reached the pinnacle, until there was no more evil for them to do. And now he's sending Israel in to wipe them out. Uh, and, and we're talking about shepherds. You understand that shepherds and laborers, these are not warriors. <laughs> So he's got he's got some time. He's got to he's got to prepare them um, to a degree because uh, the battles aren't going to depend on them. It's going to depend on, on Yahweh. Uh, and so we see here the Lord will bring you to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Uh, it is the land that the Lord promised your ancestors, first promised Abraham, to, to give you uh, a land full of milk and honey. Okay, so then in, in verse 8, um, again, we've already pointed this out, but it's worth pointing out again, and we're going to point it out many times uh, because it, it Moses keeps uh, bringing this to them because the Lord keeps giving it to Moses. You should explain to your children on that day, it's because of what the what, what Yahweh did for me when I came out of Egypt. It, 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 it's because of what Yahweh did for me when I came out of Egypt. So there's everything that is, is being set up now all the traditions that are, are going to form their culture all the all the ceremonies all the festivals that will form the culture the israelite culture uh, there is a purpose for it it is it is so that they can instruct their children and uh we're not very good at that we we aren't um as as the followers of jesus as as the church we are not very good at at um uh, I, I don't know if it was was a desire to get rid of the religious stink that, that came with some of these things, but we also lost the understanding of their purpose. Uh, we have things like Christmas, uh, but uh, a, a lot of people have even lost uh, that uh, ability to explain uh, what Christmas is all about, and we hand it over to Santa Claus. Um, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with, with the game of Santa Claus, uh, but there, there is a purpose. I was always explained that Santa Claus was actually um, one, one of the uh, agents of, of God um, when I was growing up. So the emphasis was, was still on Jesus and, and on that birth. And, uh, you know, the same thing with, with Easter. Like, how are we explaining this? Is this, is this a tool that we're using uh, to instruct our children and and what about other things like what about pentecost that that was the birth of the church and how much emphasize emphasis emphasize <laughs> emphasis do we put on that how much emphasis do we put on the birth of the church yeah that, that's just tremendous the giving of the holy spirit that's just a tremendous moment we we have christmas which um okay that's fine and dandy 
we 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 should mark uh, the, the 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 birth of Jesus. Um, we we have the the crucif crucifixion and the resurrection, but you know what about the giving of the the we, we need to make a more a, a bigger deal of that so we we have a tool to teach these things to our children okay so then we go on um here's a little more reasoning behind the the firstborn and because this comes into place so much i'm i'm just putting a bit of an emphasis on here in verse 15 when pharaoh refused to let us go the lord killed all the oldest offspring in the land of egypt from the oldest sons to the to the oldest male animals uh, that is why i offer to the lord as a sacrifice every male that first comes out of the womb but I ransom my oldest sons. This, so this is the explanation. This is what is supposed to be be taught to the children, and uh, and 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 we hear the reason I included this is because you you get the idea of the ransom. Uh, this is why the sacrifices are, are made uh, with the firstborn born son uh, that these these are offered, and the and the first um, born animals are are offered as uh, sacrifices as well. Some of them uh, you have the ability, um, the, the room has been given that you can ransom uh, those animals as well by offering something else in their place. And uh, this is what the firstborn uh, son of, of our father, who is our oldest brother, uh, he was ransomed. He, he, or he, sorry, he wasn't ransom. He, he, um, he went first. He, he was the sacrifice for the rest of us. So, okay. So Exodus, um, th this is something, okay. Um, this is me. Okay. I want you to understand this is me pointing something out to you. Um, take it for what you want. You, you need, you need to seek your own revelations on things. Uh, I'm not going to write a book on this. That's for sure. Uh, we see here um, that it's God who's leading them. I, I just want you to underline this. It, it says it right here. When Pharaoh led the people go, let the people go. Notice it doesn't say even Lord. It says God. So creator. When Pharaoh let the people go, the creator didn't lead them by way of the land of the Philistines. Even though that was a shorter route, the creator thought, if the people have to fight and face war, they will turn back to Egypt. So sometimes, you know, our, our dad takes us on a longer route to avoid certain things that we're not ready for because he doesn't want us to be discouraged and give up. Um, so the creator led the people by the roundabout way of the Reed Sea, um, the Reed Sea Desert, took them into that desert. The Israelites went up out of the land of Egypt ready for battle so just note that it's it's yahweh who's leading them okay yahweh is leading them and again pointing out um because uh, uh because we noted this uh at the at the end of genesis um they remember joseph uh they they remembered the the promise that he made his his brothers make uh, that that when when God um, dealt with them, when God covered them, took care of them, that they would bring his his bones up with them. So Moses took with him Joseph's bones, just as Joseph had made Israel's sons promise when he said to them, "When God takes care of you, you must carry my bones out of here with you." Isn't that amazing? Four hundred years later, they remember Joseph. Four hundred thirty, I guess. Four hundred thirty years, eh, give or take a few years. Um, they remember. It's amazing stuff. Okay, um, verse twenty-one. This, this, this is important because I Israel is entering into something completely. They've been enslaved for so long; they don't know what freedom looks like, uh, and they're being led out. They've, they haven't been outside of Egypt, and they're being led out now. Uh, and, and they're lacking some of the disciplines that were forced upon them it isn't it wasn't by their choice that was forced upon them and and now they're going to have to make those decisions for themselves it's a completely different thing they've got they've got the whole issue of slavery the slavery mindset that has to be overcome uh the, all the abuse and everything that they, they are they are mentally um needing healing physically needing healing um emotionally needing healing there's just so much healing that they need and and so so Yahweh um, makes it so that he is visibly present with them, visibly. The Lord went in front of them during the day in a column of cloud to guide them, and at night in a column of lightning.
to give them light. This way, they could travel during the day and at night. The column of cloud during the day and the column of lightning at night never left its place in front of the people. And, and if, if, if you had, I mean, if for some reason after experiencing all your experience in Egypt, um, you, you had any doubt whether uh, this, was, this was all good, uh, you just look up and you're reminded. Just look up and you're reminded. Isn't that amazing? Uh, so here, here we, we see that um, for, for the final time, uh, Yahweh is going to use the false god Pharaoh. Uh, and, and this is this is like one of these big disasters. It's it's like like the plagues, similar. It's gonna it's gonna cost Pharaoh a great deal here, uh, and and so he's gonna use uh, the actions of the false god Pharaoh to bring himself glory to really make sure everybody understands you can't come against this nation because I'm Yahweh. I am. I am, and. You've got no power against me. You can't touch what belongs to me. And that's what this statement's going to be. And, and he says, I'll, I'll make Pharaoh stubborn and he'll chase them. I'll gain honor at the expense of Pharaoh and all his army and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. And they did exactly that. And, and what happens is that Pharaoh loses his entire army. The entire army is destroyed. And, and and as they are coming down upon the people, we get the first complaints. We get the first, um, you know, I don't want to be here. It, it just, they said to Moses, uh, weren't there enough graves in Egypt that you took us away to die in the desert? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt like this? Didn't we tell you the same thing in Egypt? Leave us alone. Let us work for the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to work for the Egyptians than to die in the desert. There, there are some people who'd rather die in freedom uh, than, than to live in slavery. But these people, this is generational slavery. This is all they knew. And, and they could cope with that. They couldn't cope with their freedom. And, and I just remind you that I was talking about the PD, PTSD. And, and I really think it, it, it could have been a real thing here that they were facing. But they just couldn't handle this. And, and uh, they've seen all these things that, that Yahweh has done. But they still have to enter into this place of trust. Do they trust him? Is he really for them? They've, they've seen the demonstration of power, but it, it's the need to enter into relationship, which we know he offers to them uh, later on. But right now he just needs to get them out of there. In verses 13 to 14, um, we, we, we have prophecy and we hear a phrase uh, that Moses is often going to repeat. Uh, but Moses said to the people, don't be afraid. He repeats it again and again and again to them. Don't be afraid. Stand your ground and watch the Lord rescue you today. They don't even have to do anything. Just watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today, here's the prophecy. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. That's that a, pr a prophetic word that's coming in there. And the Lord will fight for you. You just keep still. And that last part is something, listen, we struggle with that today because it requires a lot of faith to keep still. <laughs> when the Lord says stand still, you've got that speeding car heading towards you. And, and uh, really, there's, somebody's going to have to rescue you because you, you can't go to the left, you can't go to the right, you're, you're boxed in. Um, and basically what he's saying is don't, don't struggle. Don't squirm. Don't, don't yell out. Don't scream. You stand here. I'm going to rescue you. And, and that's what they were facing. And that's not the easiest thing if you're not in a place of relationship. So, um, verses 15 to 16, um, I just want to point this out because, uh, it, it's like, it's like people say, well, we can't heal anybody. No, we can't, but jesus told us to and and we all know that it, it's not it's not us it, it, it's the power of god that does that because we don't have but yet he told us to heal and this is this is where we see the principle right here the lord said to moses why do you cry out to me tell the israelites to get moving <laughs> their, their back is against the sea the the army of of egypt is coming at them and and god says get moving as for you 
lift your shepherd's rod, stretch out your hand over the sea and split it in two. He tells Moses, you split it in two. You do this so that the Israelites can, can go into the sea on dry ground. It's like when we pray over somebody for healing, um, all, all we're doing is we're doing the release. We're, we're, we're following. We're, it's, it's our act of obedience that is releasing that healing. And this, Yahweh didn't need to do it this way. He did not need to do it this way. He, he did not have to do it this way. He could have just spoken, had, had it done. But no, he brought Moses into it. This is a very important principle for us to get right here. He chooses to bring us into these situations. He doesn't need to, but he's decided to. He's decided to work this way. And, and he doesn't need us. He has eyes. You know, he has ears, he has feet, he has hands, um, you know, not, not, not physically, but he's a creator. And, and what he has is so much greater than what's in this world. And he doesn't need us, but he wants us. He wants Moses. He wants Moses to be that physical leader before the people. He wants them to see Moses split the water. Um, but, but we know it, the, the, the word says that it was it, it was Yahweh who caused it. He, he, he caused that wind to blow uh, and it, it parted the waters, but not just the waters. There's two miracles here. In verse 22, there's two miracles. You, you know, if you've ever walked in, in the riverbed, you know that you'll sink up to your ankle or, or deeper in, in the silt that's, that's been deposited there. It's just, it's, yuck. It's a wonderful feeling, right? And so at the bottom of the sea, you would have this, all this dead stuff that is settled and turned into this uh, silt and sediment and, and all this sort of stuff. And um, so even if part, parting the waters, you're still going to probably have a foot or two of this muck that you can't, can't walk on. But, that's the second miracle. The Israelites walked into the sea on dry ground. The waters formed a wall for them on their right hand and on their left hand on dry ground. Okay, so here we are in, in chapter 14, verse 25. Um, this, this is what I find so funny. You know, the, the Lord jammed their chariot wheels, so he's frustrating them. So they they wouldn't uh, turn easily. Now look at this. He does this. Why? So they can't retreat. <laughs> it's, not, it's not so much that they can't go forward. He doesn't want them to be able to retreat. He doesn't want them to get out of this trap. The Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites because the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. As if they didn't know that, as if the miracles, as if those plagues weren't enough, as if the destruction of Egypt wasn't enough, as if that pillar that kept them separated from Israel wasn't enough. It, it took their wheels being jammed for them to decide, hey, this is not a place I want to be. <laughs> okay, so... Verse 26, 27, uh, it's, it's Moses, it's, it's following the Lord's commands, but it's, it's again Moses that, that covered, closed the water over his enemies, over that, that vast army of, of Pharaoh. It's in Moses. I wonder what kind of feeling that left him with. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the seas, sea, so that the water comes back and covers the Egyptians, their chariots, and their cavalry. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. At daybreak, the sea returned to its normal depth. The Egyptians were driving toward it, and the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. And it goes on, and, and it describes it in greater detail, but that's, that's enough. Um, in verse 31, uh, this, this really sums up the whole, everything that's been going on. Israel saw the amazing power of the Lord against the Egyptians. The people were in awe of Yahweh. And I, I, I've been failing to translate the Lord to Yahweh as we've been reading this. And, and I've been trying to emphasize that so that, that you would get used to the fact that his name um, is recorded here. Israel saw the amazing power of Yahweh against the Egyptians. The people were in awe of Yahweh. And they believed in Yahweh and in his servant, Moses. 
And that's what it is that believe right there. That's, that's what he's looking for, that they would believe because believe includes trust. And, and just, just for fun here in Exodus um, 15, one, uh, you know, we have, we have the first recorded worship song uh, that Moses and the Israelites sang the song to the Lord. And, and it has this beautiful, wonderful uh, song of, of worship and of, of praise. It's the first recorded. Uh, I, I don't know if there was what there was before, but this would be the first one that's actually in the name of Yahweh. There would have been other things, uh, maybe songs in, in, um, to Abraham's God, to Isaac's God, uh, to, to Jacob's God. Uh, there would be things to the Creator, but this is really uh, the first one that is to, in, in the name of Yahweh. And then, then if we skip down over that and we come down to uh, Miriam, and, and Miriam is, is called prophet here. Uh, she's called um, prophet Miriam. Uh, the prophet Miriam leads the first worship band, really. It is, and dance troupe. I got to put in there, and dance troupe. Okay, so this is the first worship um, band. So she's the first singer in, in, in a worship band and, uh, and, the, and the leader of the dance troupe. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand. All the women followed her playing tambourines and dancing. And, and she had a chorus uh, that they were singing to that. Um, now here, here, the reason I pointed out earlier uh, that it said that, that Yahweh was leading them. Uh, the, the, the reason I pointed that out is because of this. And, and you take it at whatever value you want to take it. Um, we, we know that the, the pillar was there, the, uh, you know, the, the, the pillar of lightning was there, but, but all the way along, it's been saying Yahweh was leading them. But then we get to this place where it says that Moses, that Moses had Israel leave the Reed Sea and go out into the Shur Desert. It doesn't say the Lord did that. Okay, maybe it, it's, it's, um, you know, synonymous there. Maybe, maybe it's it's one in the same thing. Uh, but it, to me, it might just explain a few things here. The Moses had Israel leave the Reed Sea and go out into the Shur Desert. They traveled for three days in the desert and found no water. Why? Because Moses was leading them. It wasn't Yahweh. It was Moses. And and where he led them, he went, you, you know, where it said Yahweh was avoiding a certain route because he didn't want them to be discouraged. Well, what would three days of no water be out in the desert? Would that not be discouraging? So is it because Moses was leading them? When they came to uh, Marah, they couldn't drink Marah's water because it was bitter. That's why it was called Marah. Makes sense. The people complained against Moses. What will we drink? Hmm. Interesting. So what happens? They're in trouble. Moses blow it? I don't know. He wasn't patient. He didn't wait for the Lord for directions. Uh, he got excited and ex exuberance and just went ahead because sometimes we do that, don't we? When we have a victory, man, we rush ahead. Uh, we see that with, with Joshua uh, after the, the victory over Jericho. Uh, they did not check with the Lord. They just rushed off to the next place and they met disaster in that place. So is that what happened here? Just questions I'm throwing out there. Uh, so, so Moses is in trouble. Israel's in trouble. He, he's got over a million people there. He's got no water for them. So Moses cried out to the Lord and the Lord pointed out a tree to him. He threw it into the water and the water became sweet. So there is the Lord who could have just zapped that water, could have just zapped it, but he's teaching them right now. Now they've learned that that wood, that type of wood is going to counteract whatever bitterness there is in the water and it's going to make it sweet. So they got that in their arsenal now. They, they write that down. They remember that for the future. So he's training them. He's training them really for 40 years in the desert. He's training them for these things that they're, they're going to encounter. So, um, and, and here really, uh, whether you consider this a covenant or not, uh, it's the Lord laying down some ground rules and, and, um, and he says to them, the Lord made a regulation and a ruling there and there he tested them. The Lord said, if you are careful, 
Okay, now why is he doing it in this place? Could it be because Moses went on? Moses wasn't being careful. It's like that whole thing of the circumcision all over again. He wasn't following the instructions. He wasn't paying attention. He did his own thing. Hmm, don't know. But suddenly, uh, as a result of that, the Lord is laying down some regulations, some, some ruling here. And he says, if you are careful to obey Yahweh, your God, if you are careful to obey Yahweh, your God, do what God thinks is right. So if you are careful to obey Yahweh, your creator, do what your creator thinks is right. Not what you think is right. What he thinks is right. Pay attention to his commandments. Give those priority. And keep all of his regulations. Then I won't bring on you any of the diseases that I brought on the Egyptians. They won't need doctors. I, I won't bring on, on you any of the diseases that I brought on the Egyptians. I am Yahweh who heals you. Wow. Okay, guys, he just became the healer right there. Write it down. You just learned something new about him right there. He is the healer. Write it down. Don't lose that. He is the healer. It's amazing stuff there. Uh, and, and look what happens now. Um, that Yahweh is leading them. Because now we're told that he's leading them. Then they came to Elam, where there were 12 springs of water. <laughs> yeah, think that's where he was planning on taking them in the first place? Moses. Uh, then they came to Elam, where there were 12 springs of water, because where the, the Lord leads us, where the Lord leads us is always better than where we lead ourselves. Uh, 12 springs of water and 70 palm trees. They camped there by the water. That's that's just beautiful. That's beautiful. What a what a, a wonderful group of lessons there for you. I just take that and run with it right there. Just write that down. Let him lead you because where he's going to take you so much better than where you think you can take yourself. So you guys be blessed today. Be encouraged. Um, you just keep yourselves open to the Lord. And uh, yeah, I'm having fun with this. I hope you guys are too. And, and uh, my wife, just, just a footnote, you can just, if you are pressed, just go, okay? Uh, but if you get a second, uh, my wife was telling me that she's surprised uh, when, when I, uh, when I re don't redo things, when I see that there's a mistake and that sort of stuff. Uh, and it's because, guys, I'm not trying to be professional. Um, I don't think uh, that, that pastoring is a career. Um, I don't think it's a career choice. Uh, I don't think it's something of professionalism, although uh, we, we want to give our very best to the Lord and, and to those that, that we have responsibility for. I want to give you my very best, but I don't think my very best is something that, that is without error. And, and I want you to see, I, I want you to see some of the things that we go through, some of the mistakes that we make, and, and it's okay. It's okay. You don't, you don't have to come across professional. You don't have to be that. Just be you. Be you. Be the you that a dad created. Be that you. And don't worry about the mistakes. Sometimes the mistakes will endear you to people. And that's okay. So uh, I apologize if you were looking for something that was going to be very professional in all of this. Uh, but I'd rather share my heart with you uh, with, with, uh, yeah, with all those errors and stuff. And you can see me <laughs> work my way out of that, right? Okay, so guys, be blessed, be encouraged. I release you on this day and, uh, and have fun with the Lord today. God bless.